a thriving market is recorded as having been run in Blackburn from the time of Queen Elizabeth I. Corn, cloth and provisions were sold each Monday around the market cross to local gentry and farm bailiffs. From these times, the old market hall developed, which many will remember. In 1846, the building of the number one market hall commenced. It opened in 1848, and the fish market was added in 1870 to 72. The market hall clock tower stood 72 feet in height and was Blackburn's most famous landmark. It was demolished on December the 30th, 1964, to make way for the new shopping center. The golden ball above the clock tower rose at noon and descended at 1 p.m. when a gun was sounded at the town hall. In the early 19th century, the town centre began to grow. A Blackburn directory of the 1820s shows 30 grocers in the town. This drawing by Charles Howarth gives a great deal of information of shopping in Darwin Street about 1850. The ancient privilege of displaying goods on the flags in front of their various establishments was maintained. On the left is the Queen's Head, occupied by Ralph Marsden. The middle building is John Myers, the saddler, and he seems to have a few customers. Finally, the old gabled shop is Mr. John Poldings, grocer and corn and flour dealer. There was a time when almost all the shops were locally owned. Two of them survive from the 19th century and still operate in the town centre today. The first of these is Mercer's Ironmongers. This family firm has been offering a wide variety of goods from its Northgate premises since 1840. The building is proudly decorated with stone lion's heads, which date back to at least 1825. About 1900, Mercers met competition from half a dozen ironmongers in Northgate by opening from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. and boasted hundreds of patrons, among them schools, clubs, banks and churches. In more recent times, Mercers has had to adapt to survive. The other great survivor is Ainsworth's, Blackburn's oldest established firm of jewellers. The shop was started by Joseph Ainsworth in 1870 at 9A Darwin Street. Joseph Ainsworth came from farming stock. His father was a farmer in the Wiltshire area, I believe, so why he started off as a bicycle shop, I really don't know. He had three sons and one daughter, and the three sons came into the business. The sons were James, Alf, and George. And then George had a son, Arnold, who was my father, and Arnold had two sons, Michael, my elder brother, and myself, Kenneth. And then I have a son, Philip, who has followed me into the business. So we're now on the, the fifth generation. I would like to mention sort of James, really, because he was the one, as I've said earlier, the shop opened up in 1938, 50 Marketplace. And father went into the RAF, so the business struggled a little bit. And James came out of retirement and help father sort of keep the business going during the war and it was through his efforts that we, we managed to keep the continuity going which could have, I think a lot of businesses disappeared during the war didn't No shopping trip would be complete without a visit to Thwaites Arcade in the mid 1950s It was a very attractive shopping mall where you could window shop protected from the weather which was rare in those days as there were no covered shopping centers it was built in 1883 on the site of some ancient tenements and it was used to link Church Street with Lord Street. The name derives from Daniel Thwaites, the brewer and one-time MP for Blackburn. The arcade was demolished in 1971 to make way for central redevelopment. These memories encapsulate those of many others, but shopping in Blackburn is very different these days. Early invaders included Booths in 1884, Boots the Chemists at the start of the 20th century, Marks and Spencers and Woolworths in the 1930s. In more recent times, British home stores and Debenhams have arrived. <laughs>